I'll guarantee it. If you'll just do what I'm about to share, it's just going to set you up for an incredible 2019. Every day, serve someone. Every day. Every day, add value to people. Every day, serve one. Every day, live the intentional life of, of, of doing for others, sometimes what they cannot do for themselves. And if you will put people first and add value to them and serve them, it becomes absolutely amazing what you and I are going to have and achieve, how we're going to help people, and in return, how it comes back to us. Benjamin Franklin said this, no one is useless in this world who lightens the burden of someone else. If you're, if you're helping someone else lift a, a, a load in your life, you, you become a very useful free person. But Mahatma Gandhi said that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. But perhaps on, on this kind of a theme, my, my favorite quote is from Albert Schweitzer, who said, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I do know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. The happiest people are not always the most successful people, but they're the ones who serve the best. I've met a lot of unhappy, successful people, haven't you? But I've never met, never met an unhappy person that gave their life of serving and giving and adding value to other people. Martin Luther King just, Jr. said, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. If you will help people get what they want, then you'll receive everything that you need in life. We gotta work at this. We gotta, if, if 2019 is gonna be an incredible year, you're gonna have to look at the year and say to yourself, what can I do to add value to people instead of what are people gonna to do to add value to me? What can I do to serve people instead of, I wonder who in this next year is going to serve me. We're going to have to do a, a complete mind shift in that whole process, service over status. You know, there are two kinds of people. There are the people that do what is right and then feel good, and there are some people who want to feel good before they do what is right. And if you want to feel good before you ever do what is right, you and I will not do a lot of things right because we'll let our emotions control it. But, but the moment that we say, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the right thing, and, and then I'll, I'll, let the emotion, I'll let the emotion fall. C character over, over comfort. Now, now here's the key. If you and I are gonna make 2019 a great year of, of, of serving people, let me tell you the first thing's gonna to happen to you, the first thing's gonna happen is we're gonna be inconvenienced. Because when you have to serve people, when you serve people, they don't do it on your time schedule. Sometimes when people say, well, I don't, I don't know if I could do that. I don't even know if I have those kind of, listen to me, the moment that we really have a desire to add value to other people, our whole life will begin to change. And so if 2019 is gonna be the year that we really wanna make it, I'm gonna share with you right now five things I do every day. And I want you to do them every day in, in, in this year. And I will promise you, I will promise you, your life is about to incredibly change. And, and all five of these things I'm going to give you right now, you can do them. These, are, these aren't hard. These aren't complicated. Every day, number one, every day I, I value people. And, and that's the foundation of everything we're talking about. If I don't value people, I'll never add value to them. I'll manipulate them. I'll do all kinds of bad things. But it all begins with valuing people. Number two, every day I think of ways to add value to people. In other words, I'll look at my schedule in the morning. I'll say where I'm going to go, who I'm going to see perhaps. And I'll say, okay, what can I do to add value to those people? I think of ways to add value to people. Number three, every day. I look for ways to add value to people. Number four, every day I do things that value people. Every day. In fact, at the end of the day, the last thing I do every evening is I do a 10 minute inventory of my day. And one of the questions I ask is, who did I add value to today? Who did I serve today? 
Okay? Every day. Every day. I value people. Think of ways that value people. Look for ways that value people. Do things that add value to people. And number five, I encourage others to add value to me. I do those five things every day. I like to give people a challenge. I'm curious, I want everyone listening for the next seven days to try something. Mm -hmm. And if you could give one to three different things that we could think differently or eliminate mm -hmm. when a thought comes to us or we react in a certain way, if there's something you think that if we eliminated one, two or three things and we did this every day for seven mm -hmm. days, we would start to see incredible mm -hmm. feelings of differently, we'd feel healthier, more lively, more loved. What would okay. be those few things? Okay, well most people, number one, they get up in the morning and they check their cell phone, they check their text, their WhatsApp, their Facebook, they post something on Facebook, they drive to work the same way, do the same thing. So they're in a program. They've actually lost their free will to the program. Wow. So if you start your day and you start your day with this simple question, what is the greatest ideal of myself that I can be today? Mm. You ask yourself that question. Now listen, your body's gonna go like, well, we gotta get a cup of coffee and you I'm gotta tired, I'm tired yeah. and you gotta go, ah, 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 body. Uh, you're not the mind, I'm the mind right now. You're gonna sit here, I'm gonna feed you. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get your coffee, you're gonna do all those things, but right now, this is my time. You're gonna obey me, right? So now, the body's no longer the mind, you're the mind. And so when it wants to get up and you become aware of it, and we turn back to the present moment, every time you do that's a victory. Wow. And you're changing some aspect of yourself. So then, ask yourself, I do this all the time. Write down four thoughts that you're gonna stay conscious of the whole day. I can't, it's too hard. You'd be surprised the moment you become conscious of what those thoughts are, how unconscious you've been to them all day, right. you know, all for weeks on end. Write down what you speak, how you speak, four things you wanna change, how you act. How do you, how do you act? Do you complain, do you blame, do you make excuses, do you feel sorry for yourself? That's a victim consciousness. What emotions do you live by? Is it possible that you're so used to living by guilt mm. you don't even know it's guilt, it just feels like you? Do you, do you allow your energy to drop? Become conscious of those states of mind and body and review them and say, this is the old self. Then say, what thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? And start firing and wiring and start feeling it. What behaviors will I demonstrate today? What choices will I make? One day, one lifetime. Mm. And just like you did, rehearse them. Rehearse the whole entire thing. Yeah. Begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain. And if you keep installing it, the hardware is going to become a software program and you're going to start thinking and acting that way. And then here's the tough part. Can you teach your body emotionally what your future is going to feel like before it's made manifest? Mm -hmm. And don't get up until you feel that way. Now, practice that for a few days and then see if you can stay in that state and watch all of a sudden all those weird doors start opening for you. Synchronicities. Synchronicities, yeah. whatever they are. <clears throat> Number two, take up time at the end of your day, the end of your day before you lay down and give thanks for your life and feel gratitude and really teach your body what it feels like. The emotional signature of gratitude, when gratitude means mm. you're getting something. <clears throat> if I give you something that's a value, you would say thank you because you would feel it, right? So when you're receiving, you're giving thanks. So gratitude is the ultimate state of receiving. Mm. So then people only accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to their emotional state. Right. So if you're in a state of gratitude, every thought's gonna make it right down into your body. If you're saying, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, and your body's programmed in negativity, it's saying, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not. That thought's gonna stop right here. So as you elevate your state, there are about 1,200 different chemical reactions that go on in the body that begin to restore and repair the body in a state of gratitude. And so we've done the research to mm -hmm. prove that. 10 minutes and just feel it with all of your heart. That's it. Wow. Third thing, and, and very important, take time, whenever it is, <clears throat> sit down, close your eyes, and begin to just open your awareness to the space around you and just sense it and pay attention to it and become more aware of it. The act of opening your awareness begins to reduce the stress hormones and creates more coherent wow. brainwave states. I'm doing it right now. 
And it's just a practice. Yeah. It's just a practice. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. Probably is sufficient. But if you can find something you really love to do and can do it with great passion, I think that's fantastic. But I think being grateful probably is number one. If you've got a job, you've got to be grateful. Say, this isn't the greatest job in the world, but even if it's a transitional job getting you where you want to go, you've got to be grateful. You don't have to love your job or be passionate about your job, just passionate about staying steady, working hard, learning skills, doing this job so well that the next one will be even better and taking such good care of this opportunity, another one will present itself. Sometimes the man says, well, if I had a good job, I'd really pour it on. But I've got this lousy job, so I just goof off. So that's not the attitude nor the philosophy. So if you'd really pour it on, this one, even though it may not be the best job in the world, if it furnishes a living, you have to be grateful. If it takes care of you and your family, you got to have gratitude, not necessarily passion, but gratitude. But I think if you have an extreme desire to wish to be successful, so you can accomplish all you wish to accomplish, be as generous as you'd like to be, be as strong as you'd like to be in terms of financial strength, involved in entrepreneurial projects that you can't do without, let's say, sizable money, so you go for that. To me, I think that's sufficient. I think if you say you have to find your passion, people find that a little bit confusing. Where would I find it and what could I be passionate about? I guess you could start with saying, I'm passionate about providing unusual success for myself and for my family. So that my children will say in the years to come, we had the most incredible life together as a family. Then I think the key is to let what you want to accomplish, let that grow where at first this is as far as you can see. But if you'll do that, you can say, wow, maybe I could multiply by two, by three, and expand my vision, accomplish a lot more. If you have an enterprise, maybe you could make it stronger and better and more far-reaching. Let that happen. It's difficult to figure it all out and then get that done. We just don't do that. We can figure out the next little part of our life that we can see and then we can say, well, eventually I'd like to have and let those dreams linger somewhere in your consciousness. I say make a list of all the things that would give you the most incredible life. Just make that list. What would do it for you over the next 10, 20 years? Places to go, things to see, people to meet, books to read, skills to learn, investments to make, being generous. Just make lists of all the things that you think would make for you a really fantastic life. And at first, don't worry about how to get it. Just let your mind run free and think what would really do it for you. And then just begin and let those lists alter. Because sometimes you start for something and then you say, sure enough, I thought this was really going to be everything I wanted. Sure enough, this is really not it. Or I can see now long before you are going to accomplish it. I'm investing too much money and time and effort. So you change. And anytime you want, you can tear up your whole list and start all over again. Some people say, I made the list so I have to accomplish it. And the answer is no, you don't have to do it. It's your life, it's your list. You can turn it upside down, right side up, scratch off some things, put some new things on or start all over again. Don't let it become an obsession, let it become an enticement. Better to be enticed than obsessed. Or we might invest too much effort and time in something that's not really going to turn out to be as great as we thought it would. The old prophet said, sometimes things that taste good in the mouth later turns bitter in the belly. We think, oh, this is it. Sure enough, it was a bit of an illusion. Don't cry for me, Argentina, right? One of the lines is, they are illusions. They're not the solutions they promise to be. But that's a learning experience. And we can only be affected by what we see. Someone says, well, you shouldn't have devoted so much of your time and energy. But if that's what you could see, only that at the moment, we're going to do it. And we just learn as we go. We need a collection of experience to give us good data on what to do, what not to do. Sometimes you need more experience to make a wiser decision. 
If a person says, well, I've eaten junk food now for a week, but look how strong and healthy I am. See, that's a delusion. One week is not going to give you the right kind of information about how you feel, whether it's a good idea to continue or not. You need a lot more experience than that to decide whether or not it's good for you. I used this illustration once with the candle lit, talking about having enough experience to make wise decisions. And I said, would all of you agree that the fire will burn my finger? Let's say that I don't know that, but you're trying to teach me now. If you put your finger in the flame, it will burn your finger. I say, okay, I'm ready to try it. So I put my finger in the flame and take it out, you know, fairly quickly, in and out, right in the flame and out. And I say, look, my finger's okay. Let me try it again. And I put my finger in the flame and take it right out. And I say, my finger's okay. Where did you get this idea that the flame would burn my finger? And they say, no, no, Mr. Rome. You can't just go like this really quick and put your finger and take it right out of the flame to know that the flame will burn your finger. You've got to leave your finger in there just a little longer. Say, oh yes, then I need a little more experience to make a wise decision. Say, well, I've taken this cocaine and you know, I feel okay. But see, you don't know the end of that road. This is only the beginning when it seems to be okay but you need more experience. Now, if you don't have any personal experience on cocaine, then you've got to go to someone who has and says, look, 20 years of my life was wasted and I finally turned it around. Like some of the old rock and rollers that have turned it around, amazing. I was in Paris the other day, had 20,000 in my class, also in town, were the Rolling Stones, who rolled into Paris and stopped for a while with Mick Jagger and all the rest. These guys got through those treacherous days of drugs and alcohol and somehow made it. A lot of them didn't make it. Boy George said, I woke up one day and all my friends were dead. That's enough experience. So maybe if you haven't had enough, you're just getting started, but you better check out somebody that's been down that road for maybe four or five years or three or four years or 20 and make a judgment based on a lot more data than just trying something to say, hey, it seems to be okay. I think that's wise advice.